So this is uh, lecture number 35, it is a continuation of the previous lecture. Uh, so what we what we were discussing was the, uh, the proof of the following uh, statement that the automorphisms, the holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc, so delta is the unit disc. and. Uh, we were trying to show that the uh, set of holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc uh, are exactly maps of the form they are Mobius transformations they are given by maps of the form z going to e to the i alpha uh, z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z where alpha is of course uh, an angle uh, and uh, and z naught is an element in the unit disc okay and what we uh, what we saw in the towards the end of the last lecture was that uh, any uh, we saw uh, that uh, any uh, uh, map of the form is it going to e to the i alpha into z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z is uh, is uh, indeed a, a Mobius transformation so this Mobius is this O with two dots on top of it it is it is called as O umlaut and it is supposed to be uh, the German symbol for OE put together okay. So this is M O E O E uh, half O and half E okay. So this is Mobius transformation it is of course also called as you know bilinear transformation or linear fractional transformation okay. Uh, so it is indeed a Mobius transformation that uh, maps uh, the unit disc onto uh, the unit disc okay so so the right hand side is of course contained in the left hand side so an element here is here what i'll have to show is that conversely any holomorphic automorphism of the unit disc is of that form okay so what i'm going to do is uh, so i'll conversely let f be a holomorphic automorphism of the unit disc. So you know what is happening is see you have you have f here uh, uh, all, all I know about f is that it is an isomorphism it is holomorphic its inverse is also holomorphic and it goes from the unit disc uh, to the unit disc and you know uh, and I have to show that uh, f is of this form okay so I have to find an alpha uh, and a z naught such that uh, f of z is actually e to the i alpha into z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z right. Now what you must understand is that see if f takes 0 to 0 then we are already done because if f takes 0 to 0 then it will be an automorphism of the unit disc which fixes the origin and we already seen as a corollary to Schwarz's lemma in an in earlier lectures that it has to be a rotation. So uh, you so f will be of the form e power i alpha times z okay which is 
just this map with z0 equal to 0 okay therefore uh, the problem is when 0 does not go to the origin right that is a, that is the issue. So what we do is uh, uh, you know we just take uh, see we we, we uh, well let us look at what 0 goes to alright. So for, for so for that matter you know I, I can fix any point z0 okay and uh, uh, suppose z0 goes to the point w0 so my map is w equal to f of z I take a point z0 it goes to the point w0 alright. Now what I am going to do is I am going to write on this side a holomorphic automorphism of the unit disc which takes uh, 0 to z0 okay I am going to do that and you know what I am going to do I am going to use the first statement I am going to use this statement. So what I am going to do is it is very very simple you know if I take this map to be z going to uh, uh, z minus z0 by 1 minus z0 bar z suppose I take this map okay then I already told you that this map is a Mobius transformation that maps the uh, interior of the unit disc to the unit disc okay and it will take z0 to 0. So the point z0 will uh, go to the go to the origin okay and what I am going to do is this is this map this is going to be the inverse of that map okay. So you know so I am going to call this as G okay and and this is my G inverse and I know G inverse uh, uh, is, is, is a map that takes uh, the unit disc to the unit disc and it will map Z0 to 0 because you know in this if you substitute Z equal to Z0 you will get 0 and this is a Mobius transformation and I am going to take its inverse. So the inverse map will take 0 to Z0 okay and then this f will take z0 to w0 okay because w0 is f of z0 right and then um, you know I am going to then again apply another map here that will move w0 to 0 alright and what is that map you know what that map is I will call that as h. So and this map is going to be so I am going to just map w0 w to 0 and you know what that map is it is just w going to same formula w minus w0 by 1 minus w0 bar w okay this map will map w0 to 0 and it will be an automorphism of the unit disk okay. So both for this side and for this side I am using this this fact that I have already proved uh, in the last lecture right and now now watch if I if I take uh, so this is h okay if I take the composition what will I get see this is also an automorphism unit disk f is also an automorphism unit disk and h is also an automorphism unit disk therefore if you compose you will get a, the composition of all the three will give you an automorphism unit disk to unit disk and it will fix the origin because it will take 0 to 0 that is the whole idea of putting this g on this side and h on that side. So it will be an automorphism unit disk which fixes the origin which by an earlier corollary of the short lemma we have seen is a rotation. So what you will get is you will get that uh, if you take uh, first apply g then apply f then apply h is uh, an automorphism yeah uh, a holomorphic automorphism of the unit disc which fixes the origin okay. 
but you know any automorphism holomorphic automorphism of the unit disc which fixes the origin is a rotation that is the first corollary one of the corollaries of the that is a corollary of the short lemma that we have seen okay. So, uh, by a corollary to the short lemma what you will get is that h circle f circle g of uh, uh, w is just going to be a rotation and therefore, it is of the form e power i alpha w ok. Since you know this is something that we have already uh, seen the set of automorphisms holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc which preserve the origin. So, this is this is a subset of this set these are all holomorphic automorphisms bijective holomorphic maps of the unit disc onto itself and these are the subset of maps which which send 0 to 0 and this is this is the same as this is identified with uh, this is equal to rotations the set of all z going to e to the i alpha z where alpha is varying from 0 to up to 2 pi ok and this is identified with you know S1 which is uh, the boundary of the unit disc we have already seen this and this is what I am using here ok. So, so H circle F circle G is an element here therefore, it is a rotation. So, it is just the variable multiplied by uh, an e power i alpha for suitable for some alpha ok for some uh, for some alpha 0 less than or equal to alpha less than 2 pi. Of course, alpha is just an angle and you have to read it mod 2 pi ok. So, I think I will have to worry about my variables here. So, here this is the z plane this is z plane and this is omega plane and <coughs> uh, let me call this as eta plane. So, this is neta. <coughs> so, neta is h of w ok and uh, w is f set and here let me use zeta and uh, uh, zeta uh, yeah z is g of zeta. So, this is zeta uh, zeta goes to z under z goes to zeta is g inverse and zeta goes to z is g ok. So, so here you have the variable. So, if I if I use these variables then I should let me change this variable to neta ok because uh, uh, not neta it should be zeta. So, you know uh, uh, you will get uh, uh, so g zeta g of zeta is z ok. So, I will get h of uh, f of z see h of f of g of zeta is h of f of g zeta, but g zeta is z. So, I will get f of z. So, I will get h of f of z is equal to uh, e power i alpha into zeta and what is the formula for zeta? The formula for zeta is z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar uh, z ok. So, I will get so f of z will be h inverse of this and uh, uh, and what is what is the formula for h inverse it is going to be uh, it is going to be the map in this direction. Uh, so, it will be h inverse of neta will be what uh, uh, you have to solve this for the omega ok. 
So, you have to solve this for omega and what will you get well if I make that calculation somewhere uh, let me let me make it somewhere here say I will get uh, neta is equal to w minus w naught by 1 minus w naught bar w you cross multiply you get neta minus w naught bar w neta w minus w naught. So, I am solving for uh, uh, so it is neta going to w I want to write w in terms of neta that is h inverse h inverse of neta is w once I have a formula for h inverse neta I will put I will apply it to this okay. So, uh, so I will have to calculate uh, w from this or omega from this so I will get omega into uh, so I will get neta plus w naught is equal to omega plus uh, w plus w naught bar w neta which is w into 1 plus w naught bar neta. So, you will get w equal to neta plus w naught by 1 plus w naught bar neta this is the formula for w. So, this is neta plus w naught by 1 plus w naught bar w w naught bar neta. So, this is the formula for h inverse of neta right and apply it to this apply it to this and you will get again an expression of this form okay you would uh, I mean if you are you must have probably done this such exercises when you have uh, taken a first course in complex analysis, but it is very easy to do it even if you have not done it. So, I, I just have to apply so this is my neta okay. So, I substitute it in here I will get e to the i alpha into z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z plus w naught by 1 plus w naught bar into neta which is this e to the i alpha into z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z this is what I get okay. In, in this whole calculation I have chosen z naught I have chosen some z naught in the unit disc and I have taken w naught to be the image of z naught okay. But you know I can make special choices for example I can take w naught equal to 0 if you want I, I can reduce the calculation by I can make the calculation simple by simply taking w naught equal to 0 w naught equal to 0 means I am taking z naught so I am taking the unique point z naught that goes to 0 under f okay. So, you make that assumption uh, choose choose the unique z naught in delta with f of z naught is equal to w naught is equal to 0 this has to happen because after all uh, f is a, f is given to be a holomorphic automorphism of delta therefore, uh, there is uh, something is mapped to 0 okay L uh, whatever is point is mapped to 0 you call that as z naught okay. So, if you do this then you are actually putting w naught equal to 0 and if you put w naught equal to 0 you get f of z in the form that you want okay. So, w naught equal to 0 gives f of z to be simply you put uh, w naught equal to 0 you see this is gone this is gone you will simply get e power i alpha z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z okay immediately and that is the proof that is the end of the proof. So, what you have done is you started with an element here f here and showed that it is of this form okay. So, these two are one and the same okay and uh, so in fact there is uh, 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 so in fact the truth is that this is also a group the holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc that is also a group because this is a subgroup this is also a certain subgroup of Mobius transformations Mobius transformations mind you form a group because you can compose Mobius the, the, the group law the group multiplication is just composition okay. So, under composition Mobius transformations form a group and this is a subgroup of Mobius transformations okay these are the 
these are certainly uh, I mean these are Mobius transformations of this particular form and they are all they are exactly the automorphisms of the unit disc ok and it is a subgroup under composition of mappings alright and there is a much smaller subgroup among these you have the smaller subgroup which are further those which fix the origin and they are the rotations ok these are not rotations there is this part is a rotation there is something more here ok. So, the fact is just like the this subgroup of Mobius transformations that fix the origin are the rotations it, it can be identified with the boundary ok that also can be identified in a nice way ok it can be identified with delta it can be identified with delta cross the boundary ok. So, you see what will happen is that if you take the the holomorphic automorphisms of delta uh, that is that I have written down a set of all maps of the form z going to e to the i alpha into z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z where alpha is an angle trade mod 2 pi and uh, uh, z naught is a point with uh, point in the unit disc ok. Now, from here I can uh, you know I can give you a map into delta cross dole delta which is delta cross S 1 S 1 is the unit circle ok set of all complex numbers with model S 1. So, it is numbers of the form e power i alpha ok and you know what is this map this map is you know you send the map you send the Mobius transformation z going to e to the i alpha z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z you simply send this to a pair where this first member is this z naught because you see z naught is an element of the unit disc and the second member is that e power i alpha and because e power i alpha will be on the boundary of the unit disc which is the unit circle ok and what will happen is that this will be also an isomorphism of groups this will be an isomorphism of groups alright. So, and what will happen is that this uh, this will contain uh, properly the automorphic holomorphisms I mean uh, holomorphic automorphisms of uh, uh, of the unit disc which preserve the origin ok which are only the rotations and uh, only rotations means that it will correspond to z naught equal to 0. So, only rotations ok and what you will get is the same map will give you this isomorphism it will you are going to send z going to e to the i alpha z to simply s 1 you are you are going to send this to the element e, e power i alpha of s 1 ok and this is identified as uh, uh, 0 cross s 1 which is sitting inside s 1 ok. So, the the holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc are identified with delta cross s 1 ok whereas, the subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms which fix the origin are simply identified with s 1. So, s 1 so you have an identification of uh, uh, as a group uh, of both the automorphisms of delta and the automorphisms of delta which fix the origin all right. So, this is a remark. Now, uh, because this diagram commutes ok and these vertical arrows are both group homomorphisms ok they are not just bijective maps they are group homomorphisms right. So, uh, now you see we come to uh, 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 so you know see what we have just looked at are the automorphisms of the unit disc ok. The question is what can you say about a general analytic map of the unit disc onto itself what are what are the most general statements you can make. So, I mean what can you say about uh, maps which are not automorphisms of the unit disc, but which are maps analytic maps of the unit disc into itself ok what can you say about such maps. So, I will tell you what the main result is the main result is that on the unit disc ok there is a there is a metric 
called the hyperbolic metric ok. It is a way uh, of defining the distance between two points in the unit disc of course you know metric is something that gives you the distance between two points in a space ok. So on the unit disc there is a special metric it is called the hyperbolic metric and we will like, we will see what that metric is later but the point is what uh, the Schwarz lemma actually says is that if you take an analytic function from the unit disc to itself which is not an automorphism then with respect to this hyperbolic metric it is a contraction it is a contraction mapping ok. So, this is the this is the this is the philosophical statement I mean this is the ideological statement the ideological statement is I mean this is the statement that we need this is this statement is needed for proceeding with the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem ok. You see last in the last lecture what we did was we proved that if you give me a simply connected domain which is not the whole complex plane then I can conformally map it to a subdomain of the unit disc that is what we prove ok. But then somehow you have to uh, alter the map so that the image fills out the whole unit disc because finally the Riemann mapping theorem requires I mean the proof of the theorem requires you to find an isomorphism holomorphic isomorphism of the given simply connected domain which is not the whole complex plane with the whole unit disc ok. So that is the reason we have to study the hyperbolic geometry on the unit disc right and the point is that uh, the Schwarz lemma actually in a in a disguised avatar of itself actually tells you that with respect to this hyperbolic metric on the unit disc if you take an arbitrary analytic function which is not an isomorphism of the unit disc of onto itself then it has to only contract. So, the moral of the story is if either it is an isomorphism of the unit disc onto itself ok, if it is not an isomorphism unit disc, disc of onto itself uh, it will be a contraction mapping which means you take two points ok and you take their images the distance between the images will be smaller in the hyperbolic metric than the distance between the original points that is what a contraction mapping is a contraction mapping between two metric spaces is a map that reduces the distance ok. The distance between two source points is, gre is greater than the distance between the image points that is what a contraction mapping is and what uh, the statement of the uh, uh, result that we need is that if you take an analytic map of the unit disc into itself which is not an isomorphism which is not a member here then it is certainly a contraction map for the hyperbolic metric alright. So, for that I will have to introduce the hyperbolic metric ok and then of course, there is also the question that what will happen to these maps what will happen to automorphic uh, I mean holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc under the hyperbolic metric the, the answer is that they will preserve the metric they will be isometries ok. A map between two metric spaces is called an isometry if it preserves distances that is you take two points in the source metric space and you take their images under this map then the distance between the images is the same as the distance between the source points if the distance is preserved the mapping is called isometric ok. So, what happens is whenever you take a map from the unit disc to itself which is analytic either it is an isomorphism and it preserves the hyperbolic metric or it is a contraction. So, it will uh, it will shrink uh, the image of the domain ok. So, this is a this is a geometric fact in hyperbolic geometry which we need ok and that is what I am trying to explain. Uh, so, you know everything comes from Schwarz lemma uh, you know. So, uh, the fact is that Schwarz lemma gives you uh, a description of the holomorphic automorphisms uh, of the unit disc which fix the origin and also the general holomorphic automorphisms of the unit disc not only that it also gives you information about any other analytic map of the unit disc onto itself ok. So, so the first thing is uh, let us recall the Schwarz lemma. So, here is the Schwarz lemma the Schwarz lemma is well 
uh, uh, f uh, is defined from the unit disc and taking values in the closed unit disc uh, analytic f takes 0 to 0 ok. Then mod f z is less than equal to mod z for all z in delta this is the Schwarz lemma which already tells you that you know any analytic mapping of the unit disc is is a contraction ok in the sense that if you if you measure the distance from the origin then it is a contraction ok. The, the mod f z is just the distance from the origin of the image f z of the point z under f and the distance from the origin of the image cannot exceed the distance from the origin of the source point that is what it says. So, the fact that there is a contraction uh, is already there in Schwarz lemma ok, but what we are going to do is we are going to uh, improve upon this ok. And of course, what is the other statement in Schwarz lemma if you get equality here for even a single z naught then it is a rotation ok, equality occurs for some z naught in delta z naught not equal to 0 if and only if f is a rotation ok. So, this is the uh, this is a short lemma from this version of the short lemma I am going to uh, I am going to get another version of the short lemma which is called the differential version of the short lemma ok. So, let me write this uh, differential version of the Schwarz lemma so what is the differential version of the Schwarz lemma uh, you see again differential version is that uh, you have uh, the the result in terms of derivative at the origin ok. So, again you take f uh, defined on the unit disc and taking values on the closed unit disc analytic and f of 0 is equal to 0 that is it takes the origin to the origin ok. Then the differential version says you take the derivative at the origin of f that cannot exceed 1 ok. The derivative at the origin of any analytic map of the unit disc into the closed unit disc the derivative cannot exceed 1 ok and again equality occurs if and only if it is a rotation if and only if f is a rotation ok. So, this is the differential version of uh, Schwarz lemma or infinitesimal version of Schwarz, Schwarz lemma because it involves the original statement in the original Schwarz lemma involves uh, f ok whereas the differential version will involve its derivative it gives you a bound for its derivative. The derivative of uh, any analytic map from the unit disc to the unit disc at the origin cannot exceed 1 and it will be 1 only if it is a rotation if it is not a rotation then it will be strictly less than 1 that is what it says ok. Now, uh, so what is the proof? Proof of the differential version you can get the proof of the differential version from the original version ok and uh, what is the proof for that. So, you know you see uh, see you we have uh, mod f of z is less than equal to mod z this is already there by the Schwarz lemma all right. So, what you do is for z not equal to 0 you divide and you take a limit and you will get this because after all limit z tends to 0 f of z by z is just f dash because f of 0 equal to 0 ok. So, you so you get it so you know uh, so, so, so this implies so mo modulus of f dash of 0 is modulus of limit z tends to 0 
uh, uh, f of z minus f of 0 by z minus 0 which is modulus of limit z tends to 0 f of z by z. But you know if the limit of some expression exists okay then uh, modulus is a continuous function so I can remove the limit outside okay. So I can write this as limit z tends to 0 mod fz by z but mod fz by z uh, of course when I say limit z tends to 0 I am assuming z is not equal to 0 okay. So if z is not equal to 0 mod fz by z is less than or equal to 1 and this is this inequality is because of the original Schwarz lemma okay therefore so this so this is this is a quantity less than or equal to 1 and you are taking the limit so this is also going to be less than or equal to 1 okay. So you get this this is the differential form of infinitesimal version of the Schwarz lemma okay. Then we have to say one more thing we we, we must say that the derivative is 1 if and only if it is a rotation okay and why is that true uh, if uh, the derivative is equal to 1 okay then uh, the function the analytic function g of z is equal to f z by z okay. So uh, if you remember the uh, in the, la the last lecture uh, or, the, or the lecture before that where we proved Schwarz lemma what we did was we defined this function g of z to be f z by z and applied the maximum principle to it okay because it was analytic it was not defined at z equal to 0 but then at z equal to 0 it had only a removable singularity okay which you can see because the z will cancel off if you write out a Taylor expansion of f at 0 namely if you write a, a Maclaurin expansion of f at 0 the first uh, constant term will be 0 that is because f of 0 equal to 0 alright and the z will cancel out and therefore g of z will be represented by a convergent power series at the origin therefore it is also analytic at the origin therefore this is actually though I am writing f z by z it extends to an analytic function at z equal to 0 it is just like sin z by z if I take limit z tends to 0 I will just get z of 0 is equal to f dash of uh, uh, 0 okay and uh, what this will tell you uh, so so modulus of g dash of modulus of g of 0 will be uh, will be 1 if mod f dash of 0 is 1 then mod g 0 will be 1 okay and you see uh, now go back to the uh, again to the proof of the Schwarz lemma in the Schwarz lemma what we did was we applied the maximum principle to g which is f by f of z by z and showed that uh, uh, the maximum value of uh, uh, the maximum value of mod g is always less than or equal to 1 I mean actually we proved mod g is less than or equal to 1 which translated to mod fz less than or equal to z which is the conclusion of the Schwarz lemma okay. So and what is the maximum principle what does it say if the maximum modulus if the maximum value is, is it occurs at an interior point then the function is a constant okay. So by the maximum principle for g principle for g, g is a constant on the unit disc okay you you will you will get g is a constant for g is a constant on the unit disc and uh, uh, and that constant is equal uh, and and uh, mod g will be mod of that constant on delta which will be which will be <coughs> mod g0 which will be 1 so this implies that uh, this constant has uh, modulus 1 okay so mod g is mod of that constant and mod g is mod of that constant it has to be equal to mod g0 but mod g0 is 1 
So, modulus of that constant is 1 ok it is a complex number with constant uh, modulus 1 therefore it is of the form e per i alpha. So, g of z is of the form e per i alpha it is a constant function but what is g of z? g of z is f of z by z. So, this will tell you that f of z is a rotation. So, in other words you know you have proved the differential form of Schwarz lemma the derivative the derivative at the origin of an analytic map of the unit discounter itself cannot exceed in modulus 1 ok it is modulus cannot exceed 1 and it is equal to 1 if and only if it is an automorphism and that automorphism has to be a rotation. So, if it is not a rotation the derivative of the origin is strictly less than 1 that is the infinitesimal version of the Schwarz lemma or ok. So, that finishes uh, the proof of this ok. So, this is the differential version of the Schwarz lemma and now uh, we come to uh, you know uh, this question of uh, trying to generalize this differential version of the Schwarz lemma. So, you can ask what will happen if I put instead of 0 is z here ok. So, take an analytic function from the unit disc to the unit disc ok. I know f dash 0 in modulus is less than or equal to 1, but my question is what will happen if you take f dash of z for z an arbitrary point on the unit disc not necessarily the point 0 ok. Then also you get a bound and that is a grander version of the Schwarz lemma and that is called Pick's lemma ok and which is a which is a fundamental lemma that is required for hyperbolic geometry ok. So, I will I will just state uh, Pick's lemma uh, somewhere I think. Uh, so, here is Pick's lemma. So, again same assumptions f from delta to delta bar analytic uh, f takes 0 to 0 ok. Uh, no, I do not think I need f takes 0 to 0 I do not need that this is very general f is any analytic map. if it is any analytic map from the unit disc taking values in the closed unit disc ok. And uh, then you see mod f dash of z ok is less than or equal to uh, 1 minus uh, mod f z squared uh, by 1 minus mod z squared for all z in delta ok. You see if you uh, in this you know if I take in particular an analytic function which takes 0 to 0 ok. Then if I substitute z equal to 0 what I will get is mod f dash of 0 is less than or equal to 1 minus 0 by 1 minus 0 because I am putting z equal to 0 and f of 0 is also 0 I must if I assume 0 goes to 0 then I will get mod f dash of 0 is less than or equal to 1 which is the differential form of the uh, Schwarz lemma. So, this is a this Pick's lemma is a generalization of the Schwarz lemma ok. The only point in Schwarz lemma is that uh, you are looking at the derivative at the origin the modulus of the derivative at the origin and you are also assuming that the map takes 0 to 0. Now, you are relaxing both the things you are taking any analytic map of the unit disc into itself and you are saying that the derivative modulus of the derivative at any point has a bound and this is the bound ok. And again just like that case you will get equality if and only if f is a automorphism ok otherwise you will have strict inequality right. So, uh, further equality occurs Uh, for a point 
of uh, delta if and only if f is an a holomorphic automorphism of delta. So, this is pixel level. So, you, you see uh, you, you can see the flavor of our arguments we are more and more worried about the mappings of the unit disk into itself the Schwarz lemma itself is a statement about the mapping of the unit disk into itself. So, we are worried about the mappings of the unit disk into itself we are worried about which of these mappings are automorphisms and we are worried about properties of such mappings ok and this con and this focusing on the unit disk is actually. Uh, leading us to studying hyperbolic geometry on the unit disc which is uh, essentially given by defining the so called hyperbolic metric on the unit disc ok. So, so this is Pick's lemma uh, and what do you uh, what do you do to prove Pick's lemma uh, the nice I mean I it is a pity I erase this diagram here I have to use the same diagram to prove Pick's lemma but I will have to finally apply the infinitesimal or differential version of Schwarz's lemma. So, let me remove I, I do not want it to take values on the unit circle alright. So, let me remove this let me just assume that I am taking the map is from the unit disc to the unit disc ok. Let me not think the let me not take make the assumption that f takes a boundary value right. So, map from the unit disc into the unit disc. So, uh, so you know the diagram is the same. So I have, I have this uh, unit disc. I have the map f, and uh, it goes from the unit disc to the unit disc. Okay, and this is w equal to f z. This is z plane, and this is the w plane. Okay, and well if you take a point z naught it will go to a point w naught ok and I want this w naught to lie inside the unit disc that is the reason why I did not take f to be a mapping from the unit disc to its closure ok. So, uh, so I want w naught to lie <coughs> inside the unit disc right and uh, well if you take any point in the unit disc it is going to go to a point inside the unit disc because I have I have I have removed the bar there ok. And what I am going to do is as I did before I am going to put here this map which uh, which is an automorphism unit disc which takes z naught to 0 ok. And you know what is that map. So, you know if you remember I call this the zeta plane earlier in this lecture and then I, I I wrote a map like this I wrote a map like this which is G which is an isomorphism it is an automorphism unit disc which takes 0 to z naught and its inverse is an automorphism of unit disc which takes z naught to 0 and you know what that map is it is simply z going to z minus z naught by 1 minus z naught bar z this is the map and this is this is this is our zeta ok and uh, this is G inverse ok and I am taking g to be this map. So, that it takes 0 to z naught because g inverse takes z naught to 0 g will take 0 to z naught alright. And I have f here mind you f is not f is not an automorphism ok f is not an iso isomorphism it is not even given to be 1 to 1 it is only given to be analytic no, nothing more is given about f ok. And then here what I do is I take this map from here uh, uh, neta is equal to h of w to the this goes lands in the neta plane and I will take an automorphism unit disc that maps w naught to 0 ok and you know what that map is what is that map it is uh, w going to w minus w naught by 1 minus w naught bar w which is your neta. So, I have this set of maps alright this is an isomorphism the last one is an isomorphism the central one is just an, an analytic map 
the center one is analytic I do not know it is uh, one to one I do not know it is one to I do not know anything about it. Now what I do is I compose if I compose what I get is G followed by F followed by H. If I compose I get H circle F circle G it is a map from the unit disc to the unit disc okay. I cannot again say anything about this map except that I can only say 0 goes to 0 okay because 0 goes to Z0, Z0 goes to W0, W0 goes to 0, so 0 goes to 0 but that is good enough for me to apply the Schwarz's lemma, the infinitesimal version of the Schwarz's lemma which will essentially give me the proof as you as you uh, as you will see. So, uh, apply differential version version of Schwarz's lemma to this composite function h circle f circle g what will you get you will get h circle f circle g derivative at 0 modulus is less than or equal to 1 that is what the infinitesimal version of the short lemma says the infinitesimal version of the short lemma says whenever uh, uh, you have an analytic function unit disc to unit disc uh, which takes the origin to the origin okay which faces the origin then the derivative of the origin has modulus less than or equal to 1. So, h circle f circle g is an analytic function from the unit disc to the unit disc which takes 0 to 0. So, it is derivative modulus of the derivative at the origin cannot exceed 1 okay, but what is this? This is if you see this is uh, g dash uh, you see uh, see I will have g dash of 0 okay. So, if I differentiate it using chain rule I will get h dash of f of g of 0 into f dash of g of 0 into g dash of 0 this is what I will get I will get this because you know if I differentiate this by chain rule I differentiate the outermost function then the next inner function and then the next inner function this is just the chain rule okay and you know uh, but this is what you see this is mod g dash of 0 mod f dash of g of 0 but what is g of what is g of 0 it is z naught so g of 0 is z naught and what is uh, uh, and I will have mod h dash of f of g of 0 which is uh, uh, w naught this is s equal to 1 I will get this all right. So, I will tell you what to do what you do is you calculate g write out g all right g will be just zeta going to zeta plus z naught by 1 plus z naught bar zeta you just have to change minus to plus that will give you the inverse map okay. You differentiate it and substitute 0 okay you literally calculate it and you will get mod f dash of z naught is less than or equal to 1 minus f of z naught the whole squared by 1 minus z naught the whole square you will directly get it it is direct calculation ordinary calculation nothing to do nothing complicated and since this is true for any z naught you get that estimate all right it is just uh, straight calculation ordinary differentiation 